Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom, and I'm Leah, and it's our TOEIC unit for the month of January. And today we're talking about office renovations. If your office needs to be fixed a little bit, maybe it's a little old, then you might hire someone to do some renovations for you. That's right, and one way that you can figure out what you need to do for renovations is that you can take a look around and get an idea of what you like and don't like about a place. And you can say, well, if we were going to fix something, maybe we should fix this, like the seating arrangement, or the meeting room, or the place where you go and get water, or you know, the bathrooms. Indeed. So today we're going to be looking at a conversation between Lauren and Oliver, and they sent out some feedback forms to the employees and asked for their opinions regarding the office. What things do they like? What things do they not like? And they're going to base the renovations on those suggestions. So let's find out what they discuss here. Let's listen to the entire conversation now, one time. I just reviewed the anonymous feedback forms our employees filled out regarding our potential office renovations. They made a lot of useful suggestions. Terrific! Let's go over them now. Okay. For starters, the majority of the workers are opposed to the open office we have now. Many comment that this type of office layout creates too many distractions. I see their point. Let's tell our designer to create smaller, more private spaces instead. We have some complaints about the lighting as well. People are saying it's too dark. We should install some better light bulbs then. It might cheer people up. Some people also remark that they are dissatisfied with the conference room. The main issue is the electronic equipment. It's quite old and out of date. It sounds like we're overdue for an upgrade. Let's speak with an expert and inquire how we can improve it. People are also unhappy about the bathroom situation. We have about 50 workers, but there are only two small restrooms between them. I'm afraid there isn't much we can do about that. There simply isn't enough space available to construct additional restrooms. Hmm, that's true. Let's get the renovation process started, though. Please compose an email to some local companies that handle renovations. Explain the changes we would like to make and try to get some quotes for their services. No problem. I'll make sure I do that this afternoon. Okay, it's time for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. We're going to be using employee feedback to determine office renovations. So, of course, employees are people who work for a company, and feedback is just some kind of response they give to you when you ask them a question or when you send out some kind of survey or something like that. And remember, we never call this feedbacks. Okay, this is a non-count noun. It's a general information that、uh, somebody provides for us. So we're looking at the Feedback in order to determine office renovations, and I did touch on the word renovation during our introduction. It just means some changes to a building. That's right. And one more thing with feedback, like for example, maybe you're using a phone service like Skype or WhatsApp, and you get off the phone with that, and they ask for your feedbacks.、So、they want you to tell them what you think of the quality of the phone call, and that might also be something you get when you do online shopping or something like that.、Uh, you might get asked if you're willing to do a survey after you get done shopping to give some feedback to the company, so they can use that information. To understand how to better serve their customers, so Lauren starts out and she says, "I just reviewed the anonymous feedback forms our employees filled out regarding our potential office renovations." So when she reviews them here, it means she looks over them. It's not like she's like studying for a test or anything. 
she's just kind of looking over them to see what people said, and they did something that's quite smart, and that's that they let people give their feedback, but they didn't have to tell who they were. So maybe if you have someone who's not very happy with the situation, they don't have to say, "Well, this is Jim in Area B, and I don't like any of this," and then Jim gets fired. So instead, they get to be anonymous, or they get to not. Provide their names or who they are. Exactly. So yes, they sent out these forms, but they did not need to be signed by anybody. So nobody has to get in trouble for their suggestions. So they offered some feedback, and again, they regarded or they um well the feedback. The forms were regarding their potential office renovations. They had to do with office renovations that were potential, which might take place in the future. And these anonymous people made a lot of useful suggestions. They gave us some ideas here. And Oliver says, "Terrific! Let's go over them now. Let's look at them and talk about them." What that tells us is that Oliver and Lauren are probably two people who are going to be really involved with making these renovations, because they're interested in what information they're getting in, and they're actually going to discuss them. And she starts out. She says, "Okay." For starters, so this is a great way to start out a conversation when you have a lot of topics that you want to talk about. For starters, to begin with, the majority of the workers are opposed to the open office we have now. So the majority of the workers, if there were 100 workers, that means more than 50 of them, so at least 51 of them, said they don't like the open office that they have now. Opposed to it means to be against it. An open office. Well, normally in an open office, you don't have a lot of like barriers to create little spaces or cubicles where people can sit and have their own privacy. Instead, it's all open. You see all the desks. You maybe can see out the window from across the room, and you can see what everybody's doing all day long. So that's an open office layout. And、uh, that has been quite popular for the last oh maybe five ten years or so. But、uh, according to research, at least I think people are finding that it doesn't really promote efficiency in the office, and they're going back to individual cubicles and things like that, which we'll get to in a second here. But yes, indeed, most of the workers are opposed to the open office that we have now. Many comment that this type of office layout creates too many distractions. Now here we've. Got the word comment, and normally it's used as a noun. Can you give me some comments on the office space? But here, comment is being used as a verb to offer comments, to give your opinion, and in this particular case, the pronunciation of both the noun and the verb are the same. Right, and they're talking about the type of office layout. Now, when you're talking about the way something is laid out, you are talking about its layout. It's the way it's set up. So, for example, maybe you have a certain layout in your home where you have your TV set on one wall, and you have a sofa, and you have a coffee table. And if you would draw a picture of it where everything is, then that would be a picture of the layout of your living room. Here, we're talking about an office layout. Out so it's the way the desks are set up and maybe any kind of bookshelves and where they're placed and that's the layout of the room. And layout could also be an illustration if you're setting up a magazine or something. Someone's going to do a layout. They're going to present the page where the text goes, where the pictures go, etc., etc. That's all about layout. But here it's the arrangement of the office. Now Oliver says, I see their point. I understand what they're talking. Talking about, let's tell our designer to create smaller, more private spaces instead. So they've got a designer who's going to come in and make those renovations. So they're going to tell the designer exactly what they want here. They want smaller, more private spaces instead. Maybe they're going back to the office cubicle, or maybe not something so private. Right, and if you remember before, Lauren started out with for starters. Well, here she could say, secondly, we have some complaints about the lighting. So instead, she said, we have some complaints about the lighting as well. So in addition to the first point she made, there is the second problem that people are commenting on, and people are saying that it's too dark. Here, the lighting is just talking about the way the room is. 
lit using different kinds of light bulbs or fluorescent lighting,、um, and and sometimes the rooms can be quite dark, so you need to add more lighting. Right. If you're studying photography, of,、uh, photography, of course, you need to understand lighting, etc., etc., and that also applies to an office setting. You need to be aware of how much light there is, where it's coming from, etc., etc. In this particular case, the people are complaining that it's just too dark in the office, and Oliver says, "Well, we should install some better light bulbs then." So, just like you install an air conditioner, you can install some better light bulbs. Maybe they'll use some. LED light bulbs or something like that, and Oliver says it might cheer people up, and that makes sense there. But if if you have a brighter office space, people tend to be happier. Yeah, and Lauren is continuing on with a third point. She doesn't say thirdly or anything like that, but she's just bringing up all the different things that people have commented on. So some people also remark or have commented on that they are dissatisfied. They are unhappy with the conference room. So that's the main area where everybody will gather together for meetings. And the problem with this room, or at least the main issue, the big problem with the room, is the electronic equipment. So maybe the lighting's okay, the layout's okay, the air conditioning in the room is just fine, but the electronic equipment is out of date. It's quite old and out of date. If something is out of date, it just means that it's no longer the newest version of what is out there on the market. So, and it might even be so slow that you can barely. Use it. For example, if you see a real fax machine, like just a fax machine, not a copy machine that can make、uh, do faxes as well, then that's probably an out of date piece of electronic equipment these days. Right, so maybe they have a projector in there, but the projector is using the old standard for resolution. It's the standard resolution. Now they need、uh, high density or high definition、uh, projectors and things like that. So yes, they're complaining about that, or maybe the sound system is no good. It makes a buzzing sound, or it's not loud enough, or something like that. So yes, indeed, the electronic equipment in the room—it's all out of date. It's old, and Oliver says, "Well, it sounds like we're overdue." For an upgrade. Now, overdue means you have to do this thing, and you should have done it a long time ago. But you've just kind of delayed on it. You've put it off. Like I think all of us are overdue for a dentist's appointment. I know I'm overdue. I haven't been to the dentist in over a year. I need to get my teeth cleaned, so I'm overdue for a dentist appointment. And in this particular case, we're talking about being overdue for an upgrade, which means when you improve your equipment or you improve Improve your software. You get the latest version. Right. So he has a recommendation. He says, "Let's speak with an expert and inquire how we can improve it." Inquire just means to ask, right? However, you can use inquire with a lot of interesting things after it. For example, you can inquire about your friend's health. You can inquire after someone's mother, for example. Oh, I'm inquiring after your mother. I hope she's doing well. You can also inquire of someone something. You can inquire into, so you can look a little bit further into, and. You can inquire within, which is something that you might see a notice out there on a on a help wanted sign. Help wanted, inquire within, which just means come inside and ask about the job. Right, so they're going to consult an expert, and they're going to ask the expert for his or her opinion about improving their electronic equipment. In the conference room, let's inquire how we can improve it. And Lauren says, "Well, people are also unhappy about the bathroom situation, about the situation involving the restrooms or the WC or whatever you want to call them. We have about 50 workers, but there are only two small restrooms between them. Ah,、uh, yeah, that's kind of a small space. And if you really need to go, and somebody's occupying the stall, what are you going to do? Are you going to go down to the next floor and?" Say, can I use your restroom? Ours upstairs is occupied. Yeah, they probably need to do something about that. That's a, a very small number for a large number of workers. It is, but Oliver points out the problem here, and he says, "Well, I am afraid. I'm afraid that there isn't much we can do about that." So he just means 
straight out, there isn't much we can do about that. There simply isn't enough space available to construct additional restrooms. We use this phrase a lot. There simply isn't enough, and you can say space, or there simply isn't enough time to get everything done. There simply isn't enough money to make me want to continue to do this job when my boss is yelling at me. Here, it's、uh, there simply isn't enough space available to construct to build additional restrooms, so more bathrooms. Right, and、uh, this, of course, is non-count. There isn't enough space, but if you're talking about a、uh, parking space, then those are countable. You could say there aren't enough parking spaces in the new parking ramp. But in this particular case, space is a non-count noun, so we're saying there isn't enough space available to construct additional restrooms. They're just going to have to live with this terrible situation. Lauren says that's true, and Oliver goes on to say, "Let's get the renovation." Process started though, so yeah. Even though we can't fix the bathroom situation, we still can do other things in the meantime. Right, and what we can do is get this action going. So, one thing that might move things one step further along. You've gotten all the information from the employees. What can you do next? Well, you can ask somebody what it's going to take to make these renovations. So he wants Lauren to compose a letter. So he wants her to write an email. Right. He says, "Please compose an email to some local companies that handle renovations." So they're going to probably send out one email to three or four companies to get their quote or their general price on how much it would cost for these companies to make these renovations. He says, "Explain the changes we would like to make and try to get some quotes for their services." This again, this quote is the price that he wants. These companies to tell him how much they want to charge him for making renovations. Right, so they're going to present their situation to these companies and tell them what they need, and then the companies are going to make some suggestions and then tell this particular company how much it's going to cost for those renovations. And Lauren says, "No problem." That's no problem for me to compose an email to some local companies. I'll make sure I do that this afternoon. So yes, indeed, this is pretty urgent here. So she's going to do it asap as soon as possible. And let's wish them luck with their res- resolutions, or rather, their renovations, or their resolutions for renovations. <laughs> okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion. Let's listen first to our Chinese teacher before we come back to discuss some useful expressions and a discussion. Question. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天的多义单元呢、啊，跟明天的多义单元要带大家来看看办公室要装修了。我们听听员工怎么说呢？好，那我们今天的对话的主角是 Lauren 跟 Oliver， 感觉上好像是主管级的人物哦。因为 Lauren 一开始就说了，他已经查了员工所填写有关于可能办公室装修的一些匿名的回馈表，而且有一些有用的建议。那么中间呢 ，Regarding。这边可以特别来看一下，所谓的 regarding 啊，它不是动词安句，它其实你去查字典，它会直接告诉你叫做介系词，就是有关什么什么东西。那如果有关于某一个主题，我们常会用 about 或者是 concerning c o n c e r n i n g， 甚至可以用片语 with regard to something with regard r e g a r d to something t o t o 或者把中间 regard 换成 respect, R E S P E C T. 这个 respect 有某个方面的意思，在这里不是尊敬啊，哈，而是某方面的意思，所以它都有有关之意。好，那当然有很多的建议啦。现在就来看看到底有什么建议呢？首先，大多数的员工都反对现在的这种格局是开放式的。好，我们来看一下第二个 Lauren。第二句的地方，它的动词反对出现的是三个字 ，are opposed to something。所谓的 be opposed to something 就是反对，反对呢还可以用 object to something， 就用主动喽 ，o b j e c t 再加上 t o，object。To something， 这也有反对的意思，而且大多数的人都说啊，这种办公室的格局，这种 layout 会有很多干扰，因为开放式的。那么我们同样在第二个 Lauren 的第三句看到动词的 command， 
评论，因为待会儿我们会看到另外的评论或者是说出现在第四个 l a u r e n 第一句的地方。看到的是 remark， 它都有书啊、评论呐、啊、的意思，所以 Oliver 这个时候就回答啦。那不然就是用设计师的呃，请设计师呢来创造比较小、私人的空间作为替代。要特别把这个“作为替代”这个副词抓出来。我们请看一下第二个 Oliver 第二句最后一个字 instead， 它是一个副词，就做某事来以之替代。比如说哦，现在好累哦，哎，那你要不要喝茶？哦，我刚,刚没有喝茶，我是喝了咖啡。I didn't have tea. I had coffee instead. 反而作为替代，我没喝茶，我是喝了咖啡作为替代。好，所以当然可以在这个格局上做一些变化。不过也有关于 lightning 抱怨一些照明设备，因为可能觉得太暗了。然后还有人提到呢，对会议室也不是很满意。主要的问题呢，就是电子设备，就是有点不复使用了，太过时了。同样在第四个 Lauren 第二句的地方，我们看到的是 issue。issue 我们常被它的意思叫做议题，也就是有人赞成，也有人反对的一些话题。但是其实 issue 在英文当中有 difficulty， 有困难的意思。好，那么主要的原因就是因为这些电子设备 out of date， 比较老旧过时咯。那当然就是应该升级嘛。不过 Oliver 接下来他的回答是说：“哎呀，我们好像早就该升级咯。」第四个 Oliver， 请看第一句的地方。Oliver 他的回答的是 ：“It sounds like we're overdue for an upgrade。”字面上的解释是，听起来我们好像过期去升级了。中间有一个叫做 overdue， 所谓的 due d u e， 其实它就是到期的意思，时间到了的意思。比如说，哎，下一班公车什么时候来呀、啊、？What time is the next bus due？ 或者是你看到一个准妈妈，怀孕的准妈妈，你会问她说，哎，小孩子什么时候要生呢、啊？预产期是什么时候？ When is the due? So due 其实还蛮好用的。好，那当然这个是要改善的部分。另外也有人抱怨啊，厕所的状况不是很满意，因为员工有五十名，可是厕所呢只有两间小间的。不过 Oliver 他的回答是，恐怕没有办法能够再改变什么，因为空间真的有点太小了。但是第五个 Oliver 的第一句这边可以画起来，我们还蛮常用的。如果我们真的对某件事情提不出什么解决办法，可以说 I'm afraid there's not much we can do about that. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about that. 恐怕我们对这件事情没有办法能够做什么。好，那么同样第五个 Oliver 第二句，我们把一个形容词 available 再抓出来看。available 指的是可以使用的、买得到的、呃，有时间的，只要是正面的这个状况啊的这个形容词都可以用 available。available。好，所以不过呢，办公室还是要稍微装修一下啦，哈。这个不过 ，however， 如何如何，请看第六个 Oliver 第一句的地方。我们常说句尾逗点 though， 放在句尾的逗点 though， 其实就是 however 的意思，因为它在口语当中也很常出现。所以现在 Oliver 就请 Lauren 能够写个电子邮件呐、啊，寄到一些负责装修的当地公司，就可以做一些装修，做一些改变。同样，这个第六个 Oliver 第二句的地方有个限定用法的关系子句哦，先行词是 some local companies， 而限定用法关系子句从后面的 that 一直到句尾的地方。所以今天下午 Lauren 就会把 email 写好，我们明天要带大家来看这个 email 怎么写呢？我是 Anna， 我们明天见。We're going to take a short break now, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, everybody. Let's take a look at our useful expressions. 
Well, sometimes you want to express views and opinions. So you want to give your personal point of view, the way you look at things, or you want to give your opinion. And a good way to do it without sounding like you're just bossing another person around is what number one says here. It says, "In my opinion." So it's not saying you have to do it this way, but in my opinion, we shouldn't launch our new product line until spring. So the The way I look at it, or in from my point of view, I don't think we should do this.、Uh, a response to this person could be, "Well, that's your opinion." Indeed, and you could also say, "I think that we shouldn't launch our new product line until next spring." You could say that as well. In my opinion, I think, and as Leah said, that's a pretty、uh, you know indirect way of expressing your opinion. You're not saying the other person is dumb or stupid or anything. You're just offering your opinion that is just as good as the other person's. Now, here's another way to express your view or opinion. You could say, "Well, it seems to me." You could say, "Well, ahead of that, well." It seems to me this is what I think, and it seems to me that things can only get better from here. So indeed, maybe things are really bad right now, but hey, if the situation is really bad, it can only get better. So let's、uh, be optimistic here. Right, and whenever you're expressing your opinion or your viewpoint, a lot of times you're trying to talk other people into seeing things the same way as you do. So you're trying to persuade them. So with the, it seems to me as well. It doesn't insult the other person. It's really looking at it from your perspective, and then you want to give you know some good evidence for why the other person should see things the way you do. The third one here is. If you ask me, I think our CEO is doing a wonderful job. Now, it isn't always the case that someone has said, "Hey, tell me what you think about the CEO." Then you would might respond, "Oh, yeah." If you ask me, sometimes this comes with no, you know, first comment. You might just be walking into the room and say, "Hey, Tom, if you ask me, I think that tie you're wearing goes really nicely with your suit." He didn't ask me, but it's just a way to open up the conversation and give your opinion. And sometimes you might run into rude people who would say something like that. Well, I'm not asking you. <laughs> I'm not interested in your opinion. Who asked you? Things like that. But of course,、uh, if you're working for a company, you don't want to have that kind of attitude because you'll turn people off and they'll become your enemies and they'll make your job. Uh, pretty difficult in the future, so yes, indeed, these are some good suggestions here on how to express your opinion in a civilized way. Now let's move on now to our discussion question. The question we have for today for discussion is: What thing would you most like to change about your office or school? Well, for me, I have a space at home that is my home office, and I'd like to do two things because I like to do voice recording. I would like to have my home office set up to be able to record from home when I want to, and I would also like my home office not to turn into the place where the rest of my family dump all of their junk. So I get all of their, you know, leftover clothes and things like that. So if I could change my office, I would. Want it to be my personal space.、How、That seems you, to be a big problem. Yeah, everybody else's junk. Indeed, I would like to get rid of all the junk in our house so that I could actually think straight. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today, and it brings us to the end of today's lesson. But we're going to continue talking about this topic in our next program. So please join us then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom, and I'm Leah. Goodbye.